Welcome Danielle to Gamer Magazine. We are sitting with her at her school, the Hill School Menlo Park in Pretoria. Uh, we would like to get you guys to know Danielle a little bit more. Danielle, tell us, how did you get involved in golf? Um, it's quite an interesting story. Uh, we went to um, a game reserve when I was very young, I think about six or seven, and the adults decided to go for sundowners and took the kids with and the, our one friend was voted started hitting uh, rocks with a little stick and he asked me to join in and apparently I was very good at it. From there he told my parents to take me to golf lessons and that's how I ended up here. You are one of the top 10 junior amateur ladies golfers but golf is not really known as a ladies sport. Do you struggle to make a name for yourself considering that the male counterpart of your sport are also dominant? Not really because women's golf South Africa are very very good at what they do and they also um, endorse us in every way possible so um, making a name for yourself is not that hard as it would have been a few years ago. WGSA has started competitions like the Sunshine Ladies Tour and Investec Race to the Investec Cup do you think those competitions are helping with the development of junior talent? Definitely, because they give us the opportunity to uh, compete in a, a professional environment as well as in our amateur environments. It gives us more exposure and more experience to do better further on in our careers. You've been playing golf for pretty much most of your life. Who has been your support base from day one? And who have been your coaches? Have you changed coaches over the years or have you stuck with one coach? Um, my first coach that I really can remember was uh, Sebrand van der Spey at Pretoria Country Club. Uh, I was with him for a few years and then after him I changed to uh, Nico van Eden. And seven years down the road I'm still with him. And he's taken me from a 27 handicapper to an elite squad player. So, and he has, and now he has formed a part of my um, support base for the last, well, seven years, along with my family and, and friends and teammates here at the school. Golf is an expensive sport and you are an amateur player. Who foots the bill when it comes to, to buying your equipment, paying your, your green fees, your club membership? Who, who, who helps you financially? Uh, my dad has always been the, <laughs> the bank in that, so, in that sense, but after, after I've made the elite squad uh, two years ago, uh, WGSA has started to help with my expenses such as travelling costs and uh, accom accommodation. Well, you know what they say, uh, dads are also known as the bank of dad. Moving on, talking about the Pretoria Country Club, you were crowned the youngest ladies champion in over a hundred years. Tell us about that experience and the honor of being crowned ladies champion at your local club. That was one very great experience. I, I worked very hard to, uh, through those weeks because I had a very big tournament coming up and it just so happened that the club champs was in that, in that uh, period. But after I won, well, I didn't know I won, but uh, when we came to the prize giving, there were all these uh, these ladies sitting there, and um, in my speech, I also told them what an honour it was to be a member at this club, but also to compete and uh, play with such great ladies, and it's a true honour to just be inside such a prestigious club. You are a great eleven at, learner at the at the old school Menlo Park. Is golf a sport at the school? It is, but until um, until very recently, it wasn't really considered a, a big sport. But at the beginning of this year, um, Nico, when Nico van Eden was appointed our uh, golf head of of the school, and now we have uh, started an academy. We have a few learners and a few teams now that are starting, and we've built a new uh, indoor facility down by the rugby fields where we practice in the mornings and afternoons and trying to uh, better the quality of the game overall in the school. That but, 
Fantastic. Talking about school golf, what are your thoughts on the development of school golf in South Africa and also at junior levels of Northern Gauteng having represented Northern Gauteng at the IPT? I think that after we lost a lot of players to the pro game a few years ago, the quality of development had took a little bit of a dip. But in the recent years, it has definitely been improving. I know that the uh, union has become very involved in the school side of things, uh, helping the schools to financially as well as um, with uh, sponsorships and uh, hosting events to uh, improve the game and uh, endorse it. Do you think South Africa is doing a good job at grooming the next group of talented young golfers? Definitely, because with the help of Mr. Johan Rupert and his little uh, sponsorship and the teams that he, have, he has uh, started, and I think that the development program has definitely a boost and will definitely uh, benefit from. You're still in school and, and your commitment to academics is obviously a vital component of being at school. How do you juggle your golfing commitments with your school commitments and what does the school do for you if you do miss exams and stuff like that? The school is very lenient. I have also have, I still have to work hard to uh, to give my best and to perform well. But having having said that, I also have to put priorities, um, put my priorities straight and also give um, much more attention to my sport than most people. So where, when I have to go away on a, on a, to, to a tournament, uh, which we probably, I miss probably about one or two days, then the teachers will definitely help me to catch up the work and if I miss a test then it will either be rescheduled or I'll, I'll make another plan. But I'll never be able to do that without the brilliant teachers at the school. One of your golfing commitments would be your training program. Talk us through what exactly you do for training in preparation for your tournaments. Well, in the mornings I go for a jog about 10 minutes, um, I'm not sure how, long, uh, how far that is. Then I, co I come to the school to practice for about an hour. Then I go to school. Or and when you, say you practice, when you say you practice for an hour, is that at the indoor? Yes, that is, that is at the indoor, indoor facility. From there we go to, um, from after school I also go practice again, or I'll go play nine holes. I'll get home at about six o'clock. I'll do my, uh, fitness routine or conditioning routine and then I'll do my homework or study. You know a lot of people take their hats off to student athletes and I can see why. Another commitment that you have towards your golf is playing overseas. Talk us through your experience of representing South Africa not only in India but Germany as well. India was uh, a very interesting experience having uh, see, be, having seen all the poverty on TV and uh, in newspapers, it was a very big culture shock to actually experience it for myself. Uh, going through all their slums and actually seeing the horrible circumstances that the people live in. Um, but playing the course and talking to the people, they were, it was an incredible experience to just uh, see another culture and the side of things uh, and another side of the world. The golf itself, um, I think I finished fourth. Uh, I didn't play my best golf, <laughs> I have to admit. But finishing fourth and uh, winning the team, uh, coming second in the team competition with my teammate from now uh, was a very good outcome for the week. And, and Germany? Germany. <laughs> Now that's the other side of the, um, yeah, other, another side of uh, civilization. Be, coming from uh, South Africa with all its poverty, it was amazing to see a country which is uh, a first world country which, uh, with all its development and um, 
prestige. Playing, playing in Germany was actually uh, quite a shock because before I went there I was expecting very cold weather but playing in uh, 40 degrees Celsius was, well I didn't expect it at all. Um, definitely again didn't play my best golf. Uh, uh, but you know, I'm thankful for the experience. Too distracted by the sights and sounds and of new places. Yeah, definitely. Who would you say is your biggest competitor? Uh, I'd have to say Ivan Asamu, our number one ranked golfer in South Africa. We have had quite a few battles, uh, notably at um, our SA under 18 championships last last year. We I sunk a pretty long uh, putt to get into a playoff with her and lost on a, the third playoff hole. Your golfing heroes, who do you look up to? Definitely Jack Nicklaus. I admire his poise and precision so much and the, the gentleman way that he plays the sport as well as the way he behaves off, off of course, doing all the chari charity work and endorsing the game. If you had any words to say to aspiring young female golfers or all the young girls that are at school with you at Menlo Park, what would you say? Um, never give up. It is hard. It's, sometimes it's not fun. But never give up and just remember that the only thing you have to do is get the ball in the hole. Lastly, Danielle, what are your goals for this year? Uh, my big goal is to make the teams that's going to the World Amateur Championships in Mexico uh, and also to win a few, few tournaments. That would be great. Danielle, thank you so much for joining Game One Magazine and all the best for your future. Thank you very much.